Hi, my name is Dr. Adam Van Wert, and I have a PharmD, which is a doctorate in pharmacy and a PhD in pharmacology and toxicology, and I, and I happen to be a professor. What I'd like to talk about briefly is the mechanism of opioid-induced constipation. What I'm going to talk about first is how the muscle and uh, nervous system is supposed to act when there is uh, food or nutrients present, and then I'll talk about what happens when someone is um, you know, have basically having an opioid in their system. And opioids would be things like morphine, codeine, oxycontin or oxycodone, Vicodin, um, things like that. So they all pretty much do the same thing uh, with respect to uh, triggering constipation. So we'll, let's go ahead though and get started. So first of all, when food is present, um, a signal will be sent to the uh, enteric nervous system. This is a nervous system that is embedded in the wall of the GI tract. It is very, very extensive. It's similar to the number of neurons that you'll find um, in the spinal cord and actually the, the central nervous system in general. You'll find a very similar number of neurons. So it's very large and some people call it the, um, the brain of the GI tract, so like a second brain. So I just have a few brief animations here to show you how things normally work. So that flashing is meant to indicate that the food is um, doing something to you know, in, interact with the receptors in the mucosa there. Okay, that food will trigger, um, and I'm, I've taken some shortcuts here, but um, ultimately it's gonna trigger something called the cholinergic interneuron, which possesses acetylcholine. That acetylcholine is released onto the muscarinic receptor here, which activates another cholinergic neuron which then triggers contraction of the circular muscle, which should, uh, by the way it's hardwired, it should actually contract behind the, the, the food bolus, which would actually be broken down already at this point, um, but that's just to illustrate that it's food. But behind the food bolus, we'll have contraction, and after we should have relaxation, and that should move the food in the correct direction. Okay, so what happens is we activate the food moves forward and that's all well and good and we're happy and we don't have any problems. However, uh, opioids activate something called the mu opioid receptor. Uh, this can be activated by endogenous opioids, meaning opioids that are already in the body and those are called enkephalins and endorphins and dynorphins. Um, however, um, typically we're, we're going to see real problems when we administer an opioid exogenously or from the outside. Um, so the example here is morphine, but what it does is it will bind to and actually activate the mu opioid receptor, which is one of the main ones, and that, sh that will inhibit this cholinergic neuron. Okay, so let's go ahead and start a little, a little bit here, the animation. So we still have the stimulus to the interneuron so I show that pulsing there, but then we have the activation of the mu opioid receptor, show that pulsing, and I show the cholinergic neuron kind of fading out um, to show that it's not being activated anymore. It's being suppressed by that mu opioid receptor. The coastal membrane is kind of gray here, just showing that it's kind of inactive. Uh, not only do we have, we actually have reduced muscle activity, we also have reduced secretions. So it's kind of inactive there. And what happens is, of course, constipation. And that's because the circular muscle is basically sleeping or not doing anything. And if you don't have motility there, um, the real problem with that is you'll keep absorbing water um, for, you know, as long as that food is there, you'll absorb water until it's pretty desiccated. And then um, it'll be harder and harder to pass the more that happens, the more you slow down that bowel motility and absorption there. So the way I look at it is basically the food is going to camp out, um, it's just going to take a break and you can't get rid of it. In a severe situation, you might have uh, impaction um, that would need surgery. That's pretty rare. We're talking severe situations, maybe an overdose, maybe combined with some other issues, uh, physiological issues that are happening there. So that's pretty rare. Um, however, these can be used, um, some opioids can be used therapeutically, the ones that, that don't go into the central nervous system and don't cause euphoria or um, addiction. Some of those can be used therapeutically in, uh, to uh, basically treat diarrhea because of this mechanism. 
So it's pretty interesting there. So that pretty much wraps it up. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for listening. And I hope you really learned something useful here. Um, and hopefully I can provide more videos um, that are succinct and useful in the future. So please keep an eye out for those.